Hello, everyone. I'm Wendy Myers of MyersDetox.com. Welcome to the Myers Detox podcast. Today, we have my good friend Eileen Durfee on the show. I love having her on. She's a nuclear engineer and uses her thinking cap to reinvent detoxification. And now she's gotten into the back, kind of the back industry, so to speak, and has helped develop a device that can completely transform your back health, how you perform, your energy levels. It's really, really compelling, the evidence that Eileen lays out in today's show. And so we're going to be talking about how to eliminate back pain with her neck shaper device. She's got lots of really interesting takeaways in today's show. We'll talk about what the real cause of back pain is and neck pain and the two exercises you should never do. This really, really surprised me. And I promise I have no problem eliminating these exercises from my exercise routine. (laughs) And we talk about why Americans spend $50 million a year on lower back pain alone. It actually might be billion. That's more accurate. We'll talk about how a head with good posture weighs 32 pounds, but how a head with forward posture where you're kind of leaned over, you know, that, uh, you know, posture where you're looking at your phone all day long, that, that posture creates 117 pounds of pressure. So as you can imagine, that's going to just completely throw you, you know, cause even more problems, exacerbate the posture issue. And we talk about how with good posture, your muscles are kind of just relaxed and supple. But when people have tight muscles, it's your body's, you know, trying to get that spine back into alignment. So if you have really tight muscles, it's a sign that your your spine's out of alignment. And we'll also talk about the two most important muscles to strengthen the spine. And Eileen will explain in detail how to use her neck shaper device used by NFL and baseball players right now currently. So I know you guys listening to this show are concerned about detox. You're concerned about the level of heavy metals and chemicals or glyphosate that you have in your body. So I created a quiz. It's called heavymetalsquiz.com. And I created this as a way to assess your relative body burden of toxins. And so just go there take the quiz. It takes a couple of minutes. And then you'll get a free video series afterwards that will explain where to begin detoxing. Where do you start? How long does it take? I created this video series just to answer all of your most common questions that people have about detox. And it'll be a great education for beginners and advanced detoxers alike. So go take the quiz at heavymetalsquiz.com. Our guest today, Eileen Durfee, is a former nuclear power engineer, auditor and inspector. Um, She became toxic and suffered from allergies, chemical sensitivities, and thyroid disease. And during her journey to heal, detoxify, and achieve natural health, she invented a lot of very helpful solutions. Eileen is passionate about taking good ideas and creating better health products to support detoxification, energy production, mineralization, and overall natural health. And she was granted one utility patent, has seven patents pending, and is writing a self-help book to fix a $100 billion a year low back pain problem. You can learn more about Eileen Durfee and her amazing line of products for lower back pain and detoxification at creatrixsolutions.com. Eileen, thanks so much for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me again. Yes, I love having you on the show. You're such a wealth of information. And today we're going to take kind of a detour from detox, which is what we normally talk about, and talk about back pain. So, so millions of people, tens of millions of people in the United States alone deal with back pain, uh, you know, chronically or on occasion. So what is the real cause of back and neck pain? It's the shape of the spine and gravity. So people don't realize that your, your muscles exert tremendous amount of efforts to hold you up in gravity, which expends energy, which makes us fatigued and everything else. But, you know, think of a baby when they're born, they're a C shape. They can't crawl. They can't sit up as they begin to develop because of gravity that are no longer suspended in water in the mother's womb the effect of gravity begins shaping their spine. 
they get a curvature in their neck and a curvature in their low back. And then they can actually stand up and walk. And it takes actually 18 years to fully develop a functional spine. It's like a crankshaft in a motor. You know, if there's a bent crankshaft, you know, you're going to overheat, you're going to wear down edges, and you're going to seize up the motor. And what we've neglected is to implement training to fully develop those curves. Right now, it's almost by accident that you would get the right shape to where you can spend less energy and move more efficient in gravity. And so what, what do tight muscles mean in relationship to your posture? A lot of people have tight muscles today. They're stressed. How is that affecting their posture? It's the body's mechanism protecting you. The muscles are tightening up saying, wait, you're drifting too far from the ideal shape. So we're going to tighten those muscles so it doesn't get worse. See, the, the correct posture is an S-shape curve where, you know, the head is in line over the hips instead of like forward head posture from all the computer time and the texting and sitting at your desk and the low back curvature so that you can stand erect. Like, you know, all the listeners could just stand up right now and pretend or try to stand up straight. Then have someone or reach down and feel your hamstrings. If your hamstrings aren't completely loose, you've got problems with your posture and your body's spending more energy to hold you erect in gravity. And so so why does it using like a posture reminder or a back brace or trying to stand up straight work? Because I know we've all done that where we're worried about our posture and we'll start, we'll, we'll start standing up straight and putting our, our shoulders back. So why isn't that maybe the answer? To induce curvature, because most people don't have good curvature. So to induce curvature, it's been scientifically proven by Dr. John S. Sugar that you need a shape underneath your body, kind of like a train has a train track to tell it where to go. So you need a cushion that has a particular shape so that the back of your spine, the spinous little pokey bone in the back can float free. And then the edges, they're called transverse process, can be caught. But it's like arching over that and then putting weight on top of the body. So you have to have something underneath your body and something on top of your body. Then you do specific muscular co-contractions and that actually induces curvature in the spine. When you, when you do these specific exercises, it will actually adjust your own spine. It will bring it to more into alignment and it exercises two forgotten muscles. Right now, all the exercises are about body muscle overload. Let's get some biceps. Let's do some leg curls and some leg extensions. Let's, you know, do all these things to make strong muscles, but they don't look at how those lever arms work in relation to the spine when it doesn't have curvature or when it does have curvature. But the two forgotten muscles are the inner spinalis and the multifidus muscles. And the thing that people don't realize is that if you have proper curvature in your spine, the back of your vertebrae, there are these, these bones that interlock, they're facets, one on top of the other. And if you're moving in gravity and you have bone on bone contact that's supposed to be bone on bone, it's strong. But if you lose the shape, then the force of gravity reverses and those bones don't catch anymore. And the only thing keeping your vertebrae from going out of alignment or discs from bulging is that multifidus and the interspinalis muscle. And so it's like absolutely critical that we begin reshaping the spine so that when we stand straight up, our hamstrings are completely loose. You know, mathematically, 
they calculated, uh, Dr. Sugar, he worked with the U.S. Olympic team, with NFL teams, and with Cornell University. They actually calculated for every vertebrae in our spine, you know, inches, is that two inches forward? Is it four inches forward off of the center? You know, you look at most people walking around, there are two to four inches off of center of gravity. And so gravity is pushing down on the head. It's pushing down on all these muscles. And there's huge forces. P people don't realize. Actually, it was first calculated in like 1680 by Borelli. He's like known as the father of spinal biomechanics. And they basically took a person and put 120 pounds on their shoulder. And then they calculated the exertion on the, the muscles and the spine. And if they put 120 pounds on the shoulder and walked, it equaled 25,585 pounds. On the fifth lumbar, you know, a lot of low back injuries are the fifth and sixth lumbar. It was 413 pounds. And the discs, you know, how many people are having worn down discs and, you know, discs that are bulging? It was 1,239 pounds. So, so people have no idea, you know, they have pain, they have tight muscles. They go and they get massages or they have a reminder to, to straighten that up. But just forcing using other musculature to straighten yourself up doesn't strengthen the multifidus or the interspinalis muscles responsible for inducing proper curvature that then would release the protective mechanism of the body so all those other muscles will go loose. Now, we have three exercises that we teach and, you know, the first exercise is a neck flexion. And we have a force applicator, we call it. It's a neck shaper where we can put force and resistance to strengthen those, those two muscles. But there's also a proper sit-up. It's almost like if you took a sleeping bag and rolled it up. Uh, an exercise ball has the wrong shape. You know, it needs to be more like a sleeping bag. We have a power cushion that we're developing. It's one that actually the NFL teams have. Dr. Scherger passed on. He never uh, manufactured them commercially. Only the New England Patriots, Dallas Cowboys, New York Giants, and the Jets have these cushions. Mm. And so with it, you can arch over it. You know, it's like a super sit-up, <laughs> you know, where you put force right on top of your chest because where you're arching over it, it's almost like if you want to move a giant boulder. You see these guys with these big, long, straight bars that they'll put at the bottom, then they'll throw like a block underneath to kind of like crib it and get that leverage, that force on it. Well, you want to do the same thing with your spine. You're going to lay over this fulcrum and then you're going to put force at a strategic location you know on the chest and then you're going to perform this sit up and it's actually going to induce that curvature mm -hmm. and then the pelvic tilt there's a special concave in the cushion where you put force on there and you do this pelvic tilt i can take really good athletes and have them stand up and measure and feel their hamstrings. Nine times out of 10, they're tight. I tell them to stand up straight. They're trying to force their shoulders back, you know, kind of like, okay, stand up straight. Let me see you stand up straight. You know, I'll have them raise their arms up. And most of the time they don't go straight up because they have this forward posture. Their hands will go forward instead of at the ears. Very few people have the right spinal shape to have their lever arms work properly. They, they lose range of motion, everything else. So to make a long story short, I can take these guys, I can have them bend over, measure how far they can reach, measure how high they can jump, measure their hamstrings, check their alignment, head over, you know, hips and shoulders, do one set of each of these exercises on this equipment and 
they're like all of a sudden standing up straight without exerting the muscles. Their hamstrings are loose and they can reach up to six inches further in one session. And so it takes, in order to train the spine, you know, Dr. Sugar worked with Cornell and he, he, the New England Patriots is where he really focused his efforts with them. And it took eight weeks of doing these exercises and it's not very many because you have to start really slow because a lot of people have flat backs, the forward head posture, and those muscles are weak that people are not used to using them or their musculature, other musculature is so tight that their range of motion is so restricted. So you start off slow and you work. But after eight weeks, these people like have like a new spine. And so this is not being taught you know, all these other methods of just, you know, stand up straight, put a book on your head. It's just that you're not inducing curvature and strength in the right muscles. And, and so it's always going to have to be like wear the back brace, always remind. But it's always, if anybody's had back pain, I have lived my whole life with back pain. I was almost a miscarriage. I had to wear special shoes because my hip turned in. My one knee hit the other one. I grew nine inches in three months. I was ran over by a car in a parking lot. Every breath was just like daggers in my chest and I couldn't raise my arms. And that's when I met Dr. Sugar. Mm. And so he rehabilitated me through these exercises. And it's, you know, I can't let it be forgotten because this is really the answer to back pain. So it's like all the people out there that, you know, it's just like they'll even use CBD or THC, you know, topicals to get rid of the pain. So then they feel like they have more range of motion, but they're wearing off more tips of their bones, their, their, you know, cartilage, their um, discs, their, you know, fooling their body you know, and so I want to get to a real solution. You know, yeah, sometimes, you know, we have to do anti-inflammatory things. And, you know, yeah, we do want to try to stand up straight because we do have habits. Like when you're, you know, head down, you know, texting on your phone, let's, you know, get in a better position, start changing some habits because these repetitive motions we have, it's like br brushing and flossing your teeth. Dr. Shergi used to say, you know, brush and floss the ones you want to keep. But if you want to attain or keep the right curvature that can give you efficient movement and gravity without pain, so you're not expending as much energy, you've got to do your power cushion and your neck shaper and your pelvic tilt. That's what he always used to say, just like a few minutes a day. And that's all it takes. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have function of your back, you know, you are not going to, you're going to slowly start going downhill. And I was acutely reminded of this after I had my daughter winter about 10 years ago. And then as soon as, you know, six weeks later started exercising, pull, I was doing, just doing a bare, I was bent over. That's all I did. And I pulled my piriformis muscle and that set me off on this two year long journey to rehabilitate my body. You know, that it was the very base of my spine that this, uh, I pulled my muscle, but then, um, as I got rehabilitated, I felt stronger than I went and lifted weights. And the trainer had me do this weird twisting exercise with a weight and my disc started bulging out. So I, I just had a lot of weakness there. And, you know, a lot of typical exercises, weight training, you think you're being healthy, but if you're not kind of focusing on these core or spine or stabilizing muscles that you may be working, doing Pilates. I do Pilates now because um, it just feels a lot safer to me because I have a, I, I had a lot of pain and a lot of loss of time and money. It was cost tens of thousands of dollars to rehabilitate my back. I assure you, you do not want to go there. It's better to prevent that. And it's better to, and we all know with, you know, 
we, we have poor posture, bad chairs. People are like looking over their phone. <laughs> They're sitting in bed on their computer in a horrible spinal, you know, position. And so I think a lot of people realize, especially if they've had a back injury, they need to be thinking about their spine health. And I love that when you told me you were getting into kind of like gadgets that help rehabilitate the spine, I knew that you were going to hit a home run, that you were going to create something that was really, really special and uh, really, really effective. You had mentioned that there was some science um, behind some like exercises that you don't recommend or something, things that a lot of people are doing that you think are counterproductive. Can you tell us about those? Sure. Dr. Sherger looked at the whole body because off your spine, you got lever arms. You know, you start using your arms, you know, that usually goes up and causes neck pain, you know, or legs. If you do things with your legs, you know, your knees, then that's going to go up and make, you know, hip problems. And so there's two exercises that are actually not good for you at all. And they're really common. The leg curl. When you lay down in your stomach and you got weights and you're, you know, pulling back on your leg, you know, on the back, your hamstring area. Um, he actually did some studies. This was all proven at Cornell University. The third lever arm systems are actually written wrong in textbooks. But basically, that's putting more stress on your ligament, the ACL in your knee. And so that is a bad exercise. You should never do a leg curl and you should never do uh, a leg extension either because they both- Done, done. I will never do those again, I promise. (laughs) Happy to check those off. (laughs) I mean, you can do things like squats where you properly, you know, keep your chest up and you, you know, you're bending at your hips. You can do a leg press where your back is stabilized, you know, where you can push. You want to do things that stabilize your back, like bent over flies, bad, because you're exposing that low back curve where, you know, your, you know, your lats could then pull in you know, and affect the curvature of the low back. So then, you know, you're susceptible to a lot of injuries there. And there's just, you know, an evaluation that needs to take place with each person because you really shouldn't do any hamstring work unless the person already can stand up straight and not have tight hamstrings. Otherwise, you're like damaging the body. So, You know, one person's different than the other, but there's these super simple screening techniques and it all, you know, goes about like, you know, your head posture, you know, you can look at somebody, you know, from the side and see, you know, are they veering forward or is their chin almost slightly up when they sit up straight, you know, evaluate you know, what's a, what's a good neck curve? What's a bad neck curve? And then also you can evaluate that by turning your head. When you have them look and rotate, you know, if they've got restrictions, they're going to be shifting their head to the side instead of just being able to turn, you know, they're going to try to, you know, work around it. So if their eyes don't stay level when they're, when they're turning their head to the left and the right, you know, you got problems in the neck. I mean, people will tell you, I mean, Low back pain alone in the United States is a $50 billion a year problem. That does not include neck. That does not include the headaches from it or the pain radiating down arms. That's just low back pain. And yeah, I, I was in that statistic because I, I spent, I mean, <laughs> I literally spent twenty to $30,000 at least, I mean, probably more than that. I mean, I did Pilates three times a week for a couple of years, privates. I did decompression, chiropractors, massage, pain medication. I mean, I was just doing, I I did a guided cortisol injection with a spine doctor. I was just doing everything I could. It was very, what uh, rehabilitated me was 
very simple exercises like uh like i just did this exercise to kind of it's called i call it back restore i laid on my stomach and then i put my leg my knees up on kind of like a cushion and then put my kind of heels to my butt and then just laid in that position because it kind of helped to decompress my disc back into spinal alignment but you know but the, what your concept your neck shaper is such a brilliant idea it's very very simple it's very easy to do can you demonstrate that again because oh had, sure sure yes. i know so, that there's listeners that can't see what i'm doing yeah but imagine like a baseball catcher's face mask with a little bit more room between your nose and the cushions and then imagine a handlebar on it okay so the proper way to do that is i'm gonna like lower my chair here (laughs) is like tilt your head back and look up at the ceiling Mm -hmm. that's the starting position then you want to put pressure on this you can do it even without the device and put your fingers on your cheeks But then you want to think about nodding, just chin down, where you're putting pressure and you just go down to the chin level. Then you let go of the muscles and relax and push it back. And that's basically the neck flexion movement. And if you're standing up and doing this, that's the correct way to do it. I'm sitting down now. You will actually feel the low back curve slightly flex and increase. So doing this neck shaper actually increases low back flexibility. Now, this is just the start, our spinal fitness line of equipment. And this is all based on the theories of Dr. Sugar and what he used with the NFL and the US Olympic team. And there is like 43 pieces of equipment that go with this. Hmm. And um, I'm going to be, I'd love to do a training until we get the equipment to show people how to roll a sleeping bag so they can do the arching over and do the sit up and to do the pelvic tilt. And then uh, there's a back twist exercise uh, where we're making these cushions. Actually, I have a cushion right over there. I don't know if I should go grab it or not, but it has a groove in it. The plexus roll is almost, almost meaningful, but it crunches the spinous. You got to let the spinous float. And then the edges have the transverse process, but then the plexus roll, the shape isn't right. Because what you want to do is you want to do this back twist where you sit on a chair, it's like sitting on your hip bones. So you're sitting up and you and you put your arms kind of like your you know, chicken, you know, you're flapping your wings, chicken. And then you lead with the head where you do this twist. And what that twist does is it increases blood flow to the spinal discs. And then it changes the disc from a foam, like a kitchen sponge to a liquid gel because we want to make it moldable. So chin up slightly, lead with your eyes, look to the back and you twist and you pretend that you've got a rod, you know, going through your head to your pelvis. And you do that like 30 times. And then you lay down over these cushions. We make them in five different diameters because if you have really forward head posture, you could have a bigger cushion to support the neck. And then if you have a really flat back, you got to have a little tiny one underneath there. And then as you lay over it, because now gravity is off of the muscles that are tight, your body can begin to relax. You know, you put one under the low back, one inch above the, the hip bone, and then you feel the void in the neck, you know, so your, your head, you know, comfortably rests on the ground, but it's not propped up too much and not too empty. So that way gravity does its thing. And then 20 minutes later, that 
disc material that was a gel is now back to the density of a kitchen scrubbing sponge. And when you lay there, it's amazing. You will actually hear vertebrae go into alignment because the tight muscles are no longer resisting and holding the vertebrae. There was a business next door and the guy's son fell off of a trampoline. He'd been through physical therapy, everything, and the poor kid was having seizures. And he happened to come over and I had these exercise cushions. I mean, ugly ducklings because we're mixing foam for densities and pouring color and our surfaces aren't right and everything else. And so I fitted him to the cushions and I didn't even have a low back cushion. I just had the neck cushion, but I just gave him a bigger diameter one for his low back. And his dad came back a week later and said, he hasn't had a seizure. And he takes the cushions everywhere with him. And, you know, it's, and, and I didn't have the neck shaper at the time. So I just told him, I said, you know, just look up the ceiling, put your fingers on your cheekbones, just head down and relax. So I taught him how to do that. So he would do the back twist, do his neck flexion, and then lay over these cushions. No surgery. The kids stop having seizures. And he says, I didn't have to tell him. He takes those cushions everywhere with him. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I think people think when they have a back injury or even very serious ones that it's this complex thing and they need to have surgery. And of course, they go to the doctor and the doctors, that's what they do. They do surgery. They're going to tell you to do surgery uh, for the most part. And so, and but people go to chiropractors and that the, the chiropractors don't always have these kinds of, of tools or, you know, they, they have their, their set of tools, which are awesome. But uh, many times, like for me, going to a chiropractor didn't help me. It, it, I couldn't, I was had an acute injury. I had a bulging disc. I, they couldn't adjust me. No one would adjust me. You know, they were limited in their capacity to help me. The decompression didn't feel good to me. It didn't help me. It, it was, uh, it was a, a more complex thing. It was a spinal alignment issue and it was my posture and it was, there was other stuff going on that I've been able to fix and resolve Thanks in part to your advice, but it was just, uh, it was more, I, it was, I was able to help myself. It wasn't going outside to a doctor or a chiropractor that finally helped me resolve my back issues. Right. I mean, I go to a chiropractor occasionally, I get K laser treatments, you know, if I've worked and injured, I, I do a lot of, a lot of stuff that probably for my age and for structure, I shouldn't be doing, you know, but I, I work hard. And so, you know, I immediately, when there's something not right, I'm taking care of myself. After my car wreck where I was ran over, For Dr. Sugar, he had me teaching his other patients exercises. So there's other exercises he do. There's like leg drag, there's some other hip rotations, and there's just different things that you need to do. And so if we can look at it like, okay, we got to brush and floss our teeth. You know, let's take like five times that long, which isn't that much time, and just do these three exercises each day and we're gonna like protect ourselves from injury and we're gonna notice that we have more energy a lot of people are fatigued a lot of people that aren't into natural health are living on caffeine but look at their posture it's a tremendous amount of energy and and with detox it's all about energy if you don't have the right minerals in the cells you're not going to produce the energy your adrenal glands and all that And that's why I had to get into the structural aspect of this, because this is huge. You can do everything else right and have this wrong and never get really well. Yeah. I mean, the spine affects so much in your body. There's some, all your nerves go through your spine, all of your, there's so much like energy and chi that also goes, goes through there. And so many people are negatively impacted uh, by this, by having their spine out of alignment. Is there anything else that you wanted to, to add to, the, to this conversation that we haven't you know, brought up yet? 
I have a few statistics that I could read that people probably don't realize. You know, I went over that 25,585 pounds. <laughs> That's huge. You know, we talked about the hamstring and I wanted to go over the fact that if from your waist to your head, if you're like four inches forward, instead of having the right shape, you know, over your pelvis, that you're going to have 893 pounds of exertion in your hips. That's huge. I mean, how many hip replacements are we having? How many knee replacements are we having? The hamstring alone, when you're that far forward, is exerting 400 pounds of effort. That's, you know, with proper. Now compare that to proper posture. It's only 77 pounds of effort. I mean, it, it, it's just huge, you know, so a head with good posture to hold it upright is 32 pounds. Straight posture is 64 pounds, but forward head posture is 117 pounds. Wow. And so when you take the joints, and the discs, because they mathematically calculated all this out at the university. When you take that into consideration, the, the discs get 86 pounds. It's it just like the muscles are constantly tight. And with good posture, you're going to have relaxed muscles. So it's like how many people can sit and feel are all your neck muscles going down into your shoulders relaxed? You know, um, you know, just start checking yourself and then, you know, you know, I have the wrong shape. How am I? That's why I call it the neck shaper, because <laughs> the answer is get the right shape. It's like if somebody was to, um, you know, balance something perfectly in gravity, like you'll see people even spinning basketballs on one finger, you know, if you're you're balanced in gravity, it's not going to take much effort. But if it's at like, you know, bent over so many degrees, a good example is to take a broom handle and try to balance a broom handle, but then hold it forward at 60 degrees and your wrist will be so fatigued that it can't hold it up. And that's your body. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people have uh, their, their neck muscles are so tight from trying to get it back into balance. They have, they have migraines, they have headaches. Um, they have, you know, probably their eyesight is affected to a degree. They get like jaw pain and clenching at night. And, you know, th this, uh, uh, having your neck out of alignment and your back causes so many other issues that people aren't, are, aren't really aware of. And then that can lead to other injuries as well. Um, so it's just, it just, you know, makes sense to prevent all this stuff and work on your spinal alignment. Like I went to the chiropractor once they did an x-ray on my neck and it was completely straight. <laughs> there was like no carbon in it. Military what, neck. <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> right. But it doesn't take much, you know, Dr. Sherger used to say six times a day, you know, obviously it's better to have the neck shaper, but even with your own hands doing this properly, mm -hmm. doing that, you know, some people could maybe only do it one or two times without pain in their neck, but that's where you start. And then you spread it out and you do it six times a day. You start doing these simple neck flexion exercises six times a day. You're going to see dramatic changes in how tight your muscles are. It's going to begin shaping your spine without you actually having to force yourself to sit up straight or to hold your head back. Actually, it'll become more natural because we're strengthening those muscles to be able to shift the gravitational force. You know, the gravitational force completely reverses on your body based on the curvature in your spine. And so it's, yeah, it's, it's a super simple thing to do. It doesn't take very many minutes. It's not like having to go to the gym and spend a half an hour on a workout. It's just takes minutes.
Yeah. And I think so many people are focused on how their physical body looks. And this is something I learned, you know, going through my physical therapy and using a therapeutic Pilates and doing gyrotonics and doing other types of things I was using to rehabilitate myself. I really realized that, you know, all this weightlifting I've been doing is great. I was in good shape and my body looked amazing, but I was forgetting all those little stability muscles those, those unsexy muscles that uh, people just ignore that are so important, especially as we get older, to, to hold up our posture, to keep our hips in place, and to prevent injury, most importantly. And, and especially for those of you, like myself, that have been injured before, this is even paramount importance. Because I know if I get out of shape and my core gets starts to get flabby or you know, uh, which happened during the pandemic, I kind of use that as, as an excuse not to exercise as much and not go to the gym because we couldn't. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to stay home and eat ice cream. Yay. <laughs> um, it just is yeah, an excuse. And uh, and I, I injured my back again because I had lost tone and, and core. And, and so it's just another reminder that, you know, you you need to work on the unsexy muscles uh, to maintain your mobility and your your back health. Yeah, and a lot of those calculations that they did on a spine with proper curvature and strength in the arms and, you know, the ability to run and to jump, it's a 15 times to one mechanical advantage for strength, speed, you know, everything else. And so when you don't have good spinal curvature and you start, you know, working out your arms and your legs and your back, you're spending so much more energy than you really would if you had the right curvature. So it's really should be a core exercise. They need to change physical education from kindergarten up to teach these things. Because, you know, you look at the Olympic athletes and the gymnasts you look at the big curvature in their low back and how their head's so nice and up and the skaters you know it's just like wow what posture why do you think they can athletically perform so well it's because they got the mechanical advantage they got the shapes but you know what we can give every child that if we begin training at the beginning to shape that spine and then quit doing a regular sit up and these crunches that's destroying the low back curve with the power cushion and arching over that i mean the range of motion is is incredible and you're going to work your abs and you know you could do some knee ups and you can do some other ab exercises but there's certain ab exercises that destroy that low back curve it's going to tighten those hamstrings it's going to reduce flexibility reduce speed reduce jump height i mean we really have to rethink how we're developing our spine yeah so everyone i encourage you to get a neck shaper i love mine uh i it's something that i've started incorporating into my morning routine it's something i do before i do pilates it only takes a few minutes to do because for me i want to maintain my mobility my flexibility well i want to live to 100 and beyond and i want to feel good and i want to look good doing that and you know you can't ignore your spine health and expect some like miracle to happen uh, with, with your health and your stability and your flexibility as well. So Eileen, tell us where we can get the neck shaper. At Creatrix Solutions. And in the search box, you can just type neck and it'll pull up or you can scroll down. There's a banner with a picture of this. I got to get some more pictures. Nate Diaz is using this. Luke Rockhold. You know, it's just like there's a lot of people uh, in the NFL and the Major League Baseball players, Jet Johnson is using it, and they're finding, you know, huge benefits to using this. So everyone, I highly recommend that. It's just a, such a simple tool. It just takes a few minutes a day with huge, huge benefits. And Eileen has been on the show many, many times. I encourage you to check out 
her, her past shows. We've done one on coffee enemas. We've done one on hydration, proper hydration and mineralization. And there's a couple other ones we've done too. So you guys go check those out. Eileen is a wealth of information. You are a nuclear engineer and you've taken that engineer's mind and reapplied it to kind of solving a lot of uh, common issues that people have and reinventing the wheel, so to speak, when it comes mm-hmm. to detox. I love it. Uh, so love picking your brain. So thanks for coming on, Eileen. Oh, you're welcome. And we just I just got three more patents issued. I have my patent plaques in the back, but I got to add three more to it. So that makes 10. Awesome. 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 Yeah. So we're going to have more new products. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And we're going to have you on for future shows as well. We've got a few more things we want to talk about. So everyone, thanks so much for tuning in to the Myers Detox podcast. I'm Wendy Myers. Thanks for tuning in.